Hey, this is Jordan Jacks, insurance broker and owner at South Mountain Services. I'm here to break down the insurance game for you. Let's do it. All right, so this is a serious topic and one that I think deserves your attention. The racist history of insurance. We're gonna take a look at the racist history of America from slave ships to life insurance and to racist pricing practices. My hope is that this is not only just educational, but also a talk on the inherent value of the black soul, the black body, and black life in general. Okay, let's begin here. Were slave ships insured? Yes. Were human slaves considered cargo? Yes, they were. Could claims be made to reimburse slave ship owners when lives were lost? Yes, they were, and that was the intent of the policy. Slave insurance involved a contract between the slave owner and the insurance company. The insurance company would pay out a sum of money in the event of a slave's death. Slaves were a valuable possession. Many slave owners made sure that their black bodies had insurance on them. You'd see advertisements in the paper encouraging people to protect their most prized asset, their slave. Banks that are now owned by banks that exist today allowed Southerners to use their slaves as collateral to get loans. And then, less than 20 years after emancipation, Prudential, one of the largest insurers at the time, announced that policies held by black adults would now be worth one third less than those same policies held by whites. But the cost of the policy would remain the same. They said that the black mortality rate, the rate at which people pass away, was higher than that of whites. Most of the major life insurance companies would follow suit, making it nearly impossible for African Americans to get covered, preventing them from passing down wealth. It's interesting to see how easy it was to insure a slave, but once free, how difficult it was for us to insure ourselves. Also, companies redlined African American customers and denied commissions to agents who sold policies to black folks. In a survey in 1940, over 40% of life insurance companies didn't accept black policyholders. Fast forward to 1964, the Civil Rights Act passed which eliminated the discriminatory practices of charging higher premiums based on race. However, a lawsuit in the year 2000 showed that there were still policies on the books from the 1960s that charged black policyholders higher premiums. So it became more expensive to insure ourselves. Now let's talk about racist pricing policies. There's something called credit-based insurance scores. Now this is where there's certain elements of a person's credit history that's used to predict how likely you are to have an insurance loss. Credit-based insurance scores were introduced by the Fair Isaac Corporation, FICO, in the early 1990s. Now FICO estimates that approximately 95% of auto insurance companies use this credit-based system when rating their policyholders in the states where they're allowed to. In 2019, Representative Rashida Tlaib introduced HR number 1756, the Preventing of Credit Score Discrimination in Auto Insurance Act, which would prohibit the use of such practices when determining your insurance price. Another reason why having an insurance broker levels the playing field. Now, a little further down in our history timeline, in 2020, Lloyds of London apologized for its role in slavery as they dominated the shipping insurance market. They said, and I quote, we're sorry for the role played by the Lloyd's market in the 18th and 19th century slave trade, an appalling and shameful period of the English history as well as our own. <sighs> okay, so that's a brief history on how we got here, how our body was captured, and a little info about the ongoing fight for racial equality and pricing. And I hope it ends with you doing what others did to you that you couldn't do for yourself. Ensure life, get covered, pass down wealth, and bang on the system.